Arise, shine, for this is your time. This is the day the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in the why, because we still got breath. You still got breath. That means you still got life. You still got life. That means you still got an opportunity to complete your assignments. Blessings. I'm JL Gibbons, and welcome to the podcast, Completing Your Assignment. Listen, we are completing assignment, the mission that God has set for us. He has put us into his world for a good work, and we will finish it. Amen. So that is the point of this podcast. This is the point of what God has commissioned me to give back to the people and tell to the people that it's time for a revival. A revival where? In your spirit, a revival in your soul, a revival in your body, a revival in this world. Amen. Listen, so the Lord dropped this in my spirit and I know it's going to help someone. I know it's going to uh, push somebody to get into the place where they can finish the work that God has assigned them to do. Listen, many of us are facing a lot of holdups. A lot of things are not moving in our life. A lot of things are spiraling out of control. A lot of things remain in cycle and pattern. And you ask yourself, why isn't my life moving? I accepted Christ. I go to service. I pray. I fast. But things still seem not to be moving. Something seems to be holding up. Something seems to be eating your money. Something seems to be eating your joy, your peace. You can't get out of this cycle. And recently, Lord showed me something. In order to deliver, in order to finish, you got to be to be delivered. Let me say it again. In order to finish, you got to be delivered. Delivered from what? Anything that's been holding you up. Any rule of darkness, any type of spirit, any type of thing that's been chasing your family, generational cycles, whatever it is, you need to deal with it. You have to have a mindset and say, enough is enough. You have to have a mindset that says, I'm tired of being sick and tired of how things been going. And God, by the grace of God, has shown me something, even dealing in my life. And I pray and I believe that it will help you that it will transform you, that will put you in a place where you, eye, your eyes will be open, your ears will be open, and you will go forth in power. You will go forth with the strength, with the fortitude to get the job done. Because at the end of the day, you're here to do a work for the Lord. Amen. So let me go to our foundation scripture found in Matthew chapter 12, starting at verse 43. It says this, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. He walks through a dry place, seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return into my house from which I've came out of. And when he has come forth, he, he finds it empty, swept and garnished. Verse 45. Then he goes and says, take with him even seven others spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter into dwell therein. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it also be unto the wicked generation. So let me say this. Let me slow it down a little bit. Sometimes, beloved, though we are filled, though we have the Holy Spirit in us, the spirit man has been reborn. But God told me to say this to you. What's in your house? What's dwelling in your house? This house that we have is the temple of God. And God showed me when you let things go without addressing them. When you let things go without forgiving and letting things go without addressing the problems that's been going on in your life. You find yourself in a worse state than you was. Now, people say, and I heard people say, well, you can't be possessed. You can't be oppressed because we have Jesus. Absolutely. Your born again spirit is good. It's great. Spirit, Holy Spirit, that's one part. But the part is in the soul. And I'm going to say this to someone and I hope it helps you. If you continue to see things going on in your life and you don't have an answer to it, you need to seek the spirit. 
You need to understand and go and say, Lord, what is going on in my life? You need to address the problem. It doesn't make sense for a child of God, a seed of Abraham, to be under conviction, to be under turmoil, to be inflicted in their body, and their mind, and thinking that's okay. You have to get to a point in a place where you say enough is enough. And when you get to a place where you say enough is enough, you need to seek after the Lord and ask the God. See, if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty, ask God what's going on. Ask God what is happening in my life. The transformation and change is not going to come until you address what the problem is. And a lot of us have been dining on the wrong things. Let me share this with you. I was going through something in my body. And the Lord said the enemy is going to try to attack you by what you've been eating. I started cleaning up. Start getting in shape. I was doing doing my thing and I've come down, praise God. But as I came down and some things happened, supernaturally, healing started taking place in my body. This is what the Lord said to me. He said, I never said it was a physical thing, but it was a spiritual thing. Yes, men, women of God, when you don't feed upon the things of God, the word of God, if you don't find yourself in prayer, if you don't find yourself in fasting, you can leave a door open. Who's in your house? There's a stranger right now could be in your house, in your temple. You don't even realize it because you became so used to the situation. But you shouldn't be okay not being okay. I know I heard that statement say you should be okay not being okay. No, 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 no. As a child of God, you should say, no, I shouldn't be okay being o not being okay. Because why? He says the blessing of the Lord. It makes it rich and ask no sorrow. He says the blessing is upon you. And that as you being a seed of Abraham, you should not be afflicted. You should not be in turmoil. You should not be in this suffering state. Regardless of popular belief, that is not your portion. That is not what God has called you. That's not what God has placed you. So ask yourself, what's in my house? Because what happens is if you eat on the enemy's food at the enemy's table and you're eating things, the wrong things, things in the world. You're in, inducing television. You're inducing stuff off the radio and you think it's okay. And what happens is your spirit man starts to become weakened. It can't void off. It can't fight off the things that's going on. Now you're back on the suggestion to your flesh and your flesh likes to be disobedient to God. Your flesh don't want to line up with the things of God. So ask yourself, who's in my house? There's a stranger there. And since a stranger there, what is he doing? He's sucking the life out of you. He's sucking the life out of your finances. He's sucking the life out of your children. He's sucking the life out of your marriage. He's sucking the life out of your business. He's sucking the life out of your ministry. And you can't go forth and you can't start and you can't finish. Why? Because you got something illegally operating in you and around you. Don't be deceived. My people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Now, you say you pray, then what's going on? You say you fast, you say you tired, you say you're doing all this stuff, then what's going on? And as the Lord has showed me, I have opened up doors that I didn't even realize. But as a supernatural deliverance came upon my body, healing came to my body, that was, was infecting me, that was, was binding me, I got released. And I'm speaking to somebody now that just shall be a deliverance into your house. And I'm talking about the house of your temple. Because once your temple gets clean, who the sun sets free is free indeed. You are not supposed to be under bondage. You're not supposed to be under sickness. You're not supposed to be under trouble. That is not your portion. God says who the sun sets free is free indeed. And for years, you may have neglected yourself. Once you first got started, you had a passion for the word. If that passion is gone, if that fire has uh, been quenched, God says quench not the Holy Spirit. And how do you quench it? When you're not in the things of God, when you're not in the word of God, when you don't have a passion for the things of God anymore. Let me say this. You have opened a door. If you allow bitterness to come in, if you allow strife to come in, if you allow unforgiveness to come in, you have left the door open. And though you've been delivered, though you was healed at one point in time, guess what? These things came back and they're following you and they're in you. And I'm saying the only way you could be set free is get back to the things of God. You got to have a repentant mindset where you say, Lord, I turned away from what I was doing. And say this, people, God, not only do you turn away from something, but you turn back to God because a lot of us want to turn away and say, Lord, I repent. But God says, as you repent, what you're turning back to? 
I speak this into you. You need to turn back to the things of God. You need to turn off things that's not turning you on. You need to refill yourself with the word of God. You need to refill yourself with the things of God. Be back to prayer. Even if you have to start up with five minutes. Because right now, some people can't even pray for five minutes, ten minutes. Before they're tired, before they sleep. What? Because there's something in your house that is distracting you. It is something in your house that is prolonging you from going to further in the things of God. That you don't want to read the Bible for an hour, but you can watch TV for three hours. Something's in your house. Let me say this to you. If you're finding it trouble to let things go, if it, you're finding it hard to forgive others, there's something manipulating you. There's something that's trying to hold you back. It's something that doesn't want you to come to the light. Because as God has shared with me, when you have the light in you, life is in you. If you don't have light in you, then you have darkness. If you have darkness, you have death. But those who are led by the Spirit, those who are invited by the Spirit, produces light. And when light is in you, life is in you. I'm going to say it one more time. If life, light is in you, then life is in you. And if you have life, you are more than a conqueror. If you have the life of God, the reigning power of God, then guess what? No demon, no devil can hold you. You can forgive. You can walk in love. You can walk in strength. You can walk in victorious. But if things has been held up for years, let me tell you, ask yourself, who's in my house? This is a time to serve an eviction notice. When those things that's been plaguing you, those things that's been operating you unauthorized, God says it's time to serve them an eviction notice. And when you serve the eviction notice, when you confess your faults, when you confess your sins to one another, God says, I can now intertwine, now I can now get back into you, now I can come back and fill you again. Because guess what? God said that you need to be filled with light. And some of our light has been condemned. If you can look at a picture of your spiritual man, he is weakened, he's sickly, nourished, and he needs you to make a quality decision today that who's ever in my house that has not been authorized, you're trespassing, and you need to kick them out. By what? By speaking the word of God, by declaring the word of God, by cleansing yourself, by fasting, by getting back into the word of God and say, this temple that I have belongs to the most high God. This temple that I have belongs to the Lord Almighty and nothing unauthorized should dwell in me. That sickness, I promise you, man and woman of God, will leave. I promise you, man of God, those struggles that you've been having in your finances, the struggles you've been having in your marriage, once you find out who's in your house, because if the light's in your house, it's going to bring forth life. That means when, when you speak a word, you declare a word, healing will take place. The problem why healing can't take place is because you have darkness. There's no light. But I declare and decree today. That the light is about to come back. That the Holy Spirit fire is about to put a zeal back at you. And burn out everything that does not belong there. The Holy Spirit will burn out everything that belongs there. And the things that was plaguing you. Heart disorder. Diabetes. I don't care. It has a name. And Jesus says here's the name above all names. So you ask yourself, if something's not working, that's because something's been blocking. Something's been sucking the life out of you. But God says, as you cleanse your spirit, as you repent, as you turn from your wicked way, I declare and decree it shall be revival. Revival in your spirit, revival in your soul, revival in your temple. And guess what? Your life will never be the same because you will know now as you put the light back, you won't turn the light off. As you put the light back, as you clear out your house. See, what happens is when you clear it out and you don't fill it back with something, they come back sometimes more stronger. And you sitting there wasting the way. You wasting your time. You're wondering why stuff won't get moving in your house. Why can't you seem to come together with your spouse? You ask yourself, why can't you seem to get past of this rut and this debt that you've been in? You're asking yourself, why does it seem like stuff always happening at the same time Every year around this time, God says to tell you, for me to tell you, ask yourself who's in your house. Because there's something there 
There's something been sucking the life out of you. And here, this is not a condemnation, but this is an elevation. They say, guess what? It's time for a transformation. It's time for me to get out of the status quo. It's time for me to get back to the word of God. It's time for me to get back to my assignment. Ask yourself, have you been about your father's business? And the reason why you haven't, if you say you haven't, is because something's been stopping you. Something's been blocking you. Something's been turmoiling you. But now is the day. Today is the day of reckoning that the enemy must return sevenfold from everything that he stole, from everything that you've been holding yourself up with. I don't care how it happened. You know what happened. You know what you did. You know what happened. It doesn't matter. God says, therefore, there's no condemnation. The revival is coming to you. You will preach the gospel. You will heal the sick, but you can't heal the sick if you're sick yourself. If you got something holding you, how are you going to get something off of somebody else? God says, when deliverance come, finishing power will come. When deliverance come, healing will come. When deliverance come, restoration will come. When deliverance come, the blessing will be unrestricted. Why? Because no longer is an enemy, no adversary is having no free reign in you. And you know that you know that you know that something's not right. And today, God is telling me to speak to someone. It's time to get it right. It's time to bring the light back. He said, he is the light and the light brings life. If dead things are in your life, I declare and decree right now, life is about to come back to you. That God was about to bring an elevation, a transformation. The Holy Spirit is about to revise someone. Mouth to mouth resuscitation. He's about to breathe a fresh anointing on you. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying something just to say something. He's about to breathe a fresh anointing. Life. The breath of life. The Holy Spirit is about to breathe something new and fresh in you. And those things, whether they came with seven or they came with 50, doesn't matter. When Jesus healed the man who had legions in him, immediately he was in his right state of mind. Immediately he was back to who he was supposed to be. And God says, I'm about to bring you back to you who you're supposed to be. I need you to gravitate. I need you to hold on. I need you to call on the name of the Lord. Jesus said, Lord, set me free from anything that's been bound in me, from anything that's been neglecting, anything that I have done. I repent of those things. I turn back to you. I let go of those wicked ways. And I promise you, as a man of God, deliverance will hit you. The power of God will be in you and it will transform you. It will elevate you. It will take you out of that void. And guess what? Once you get delivered, you make this promise to me. Make this promise to yourself. Make this promise to the Father. Say, Father, I'm not going back. I'm not going to be associated. The children of light has nothing to do with the children of darkness. The things that you was feeding yourself on, no longer will you feed yourself on. You will feed yourself on the word. Man should look, not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Your bread, your sustenance, your nourishment for your spirit is the word of God. We pray in the spirit to edify ourselves. We prophesy to those to edify them. But I'm telling you, as you get back in line, the thing that's been held up, the things that you've been not being able to finish, not being able to do. Some of us couldn't, haven't even been able to start things. God said there will be a finishing anointing, a finishing power that's going to come upon you. Once you cleanse this house up, fill this house up, ask the Holy Spirit just to abide in you like never before. A transformation, an elevation. Put the word of God before you, listen it to your ears. I need you to, to speak it out forth because when you hear it, faith comes. And when faith comes, you, you grow. And when you grow, you are able to do what God has called you to do. You will be unstoppable. Nothing will be able to hold you back. You will be the curse breaker over your family life. You will be the one that sets the tone from here on out. The thing that you dealt with, that kept trying to follow you, trying to kept following your, your, your mother, it stops with you. It stops with you. It won't touch your children. The thing that was plaguing you, the, the unforgiveness, 
the lack, the poverty, you coming out. You no, know? you won't have another cycle of anybody on welfare or just struggling, just getting by. You will not be in that situation no longer. I declare and decree you're coming out. You're coming out as the head, not the tail, above, only not beneath. Nothing's going to be able to stop you because you're going to be immersed and wrapped in the things of God. And God says, if I be before you, who could be against you? Nothing's going to stop you. No demon, no devil. Why? Because you're casting them out. Eviction notice today. The things that's been following you, the things that's been entrapping you, the things that's bonding you. I declare and decree that you have been set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Right now, Father, touch those who are in need of a touch. Fill them once again with your spirit. I declare light be. Light in every dark place of their light. Light in every dark place in their bodies, in their souls, upon their temples. I declare that light be upon their house, their household, upon their children. Wherever the darkness is, let light shine. Because I declare and decree when the light shines, there will be life. I declare life. Life more abundantly, the life that God has chosen for you, not to be in struggle, not to be in lack, not to be in fear, not to be in worry, not to be in sickness. But I declare the healing power of God coming to you right now, resting upon you now, that every demonic force that's been set against you, that's been launched against you, that doors that you opened that you didn't know, that doors that was cast upon you from your childhood that you didn't know, that anything that's operating you unauthorized, I condemn that. I cast it to the outermost darkness and it shall no longer come near your dwelling. I declare and decree that you're set free. Your mind is set free. And then who the sun sets free is free indeed. I declare a light illuminating that when people come to you, they see something different in you. When people come around you, that the light and the glory of God will shine through you. That you will do the work of the Lord. You are delivered. You are healed. You are a child of the Most High God. You are a seed of Abraham. And the promises are yea and amen. The blessing of the Lord is going to hit your house. The blessing of the Lord is about to hit your ministry. The blessing of the Lord is about to hit everything that contains to you. Today, if you agree, I need you to say a yes. I need you to say amen. I need you to say it is done in the mighty name of Jesus. Let this word sit. Let this word marinate. I want you to go back and evaluate. Things that's been going on in your life. Listen, don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil sit there and deceive you. If you know some things have not been operating right in your life, yes, we make wrong decisions. We're talking about cycles. We're talking about things that continue to happen. We, we're talking about things that don't make sense. 99 point of your problems is spiritual. Clear out the house, get things set in order. And watch how things start flowing. And the Bible says out of your belly should flow rivers of living water. You will start bringing forth life in the midst of darkness. Because you've been empowered. You've been equipped for such a time as this. No work will be left undone in you. You will complete that what God has assigned you. You shall not die, but you shall live to declare the works of the Lord. Woman of God, man of God, that is your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm J.L. Gibbons. Please, if this bless you, I ask you to share, like, subscribe, and I know that God will do something great in your life. I know God is about to do a transformation in your life, and you'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Till next time, be blessed.